Gump with uh, your two dumbass hosts. Wonderful hosts. Dumbass. Jared Thorpe, and with me today is... Cole Mills. And the idea behind this is one uh, of us will play Researcher yes. to the other one's greatest nightmares, I suppose. <laughs> the dumbest lore in the history of great franchises. Today's mm-hmm. episode is on Alien. Yeah, because no matter what, if you keep adding to something infinitely, you'll get stupid somewhere. And so today's researcher was Cole. Yeah, I did this at midnight in a fever dream. <laughs> and um, I will be reacting to this lovely PowerPoint he made me. Oh, I thought you love it. From <laughs> And as a disclaimer, we are not experts. Oh, God, no. We... This was probably done in three hours on a wikia. Oh, definitely. If you want actual information, go to like any other YouTuber, just Google it, just uh, go, go to a wiki Go page. to someone who specializes in one specific lore, not someone who does a bunch. Yeah. Um, before we get into this, though, I would like to get Cole's opinion on the franchise of Alien as a whole. Uh, first two, great. Some of the games are great. Dump the rest. <laughs> Like in the back of a dumpster, just like, oh, I don't need this. So are you an alien or aliens person? I like aliens. I'm an alien person myself. I think my personal opinion is with every single movie, it gets worse <laughs> until Prometheus. <laughs> and Prometheus, it gets up after Covenant. I mean, from from Prometheus to Covenant, it's an improvement. At the beginning. Oh, at the beginning. It, <laughs> the beginning of Covenant is great. That is just... Uh, well, the We're day. not talking about Prometheus and Covenant. This is not Prometheus and Covenant. This yeah. is just the Ripley saga plus AVP. No, a- no AVP. No just AVP. the Ripley saga. No AVP, because I'll cover that if we do ever do Predator. This is just the the Ripley saga and some dumb fucking comics. And the comics and... Maybe some toys. Some games and toys? Uh, Mostly toys. Some games. Oh, there are some games, yeah. Okay. All right. So, with all that in mind, I do love the franchise. I love it. I I wish they it. could make good movies. They make good games. They've made... Sometimes. They've made Alien Colonial Marines. They do not make good games. They made Isolation. It's beautiful in there. Okay. Yes, Isolation is great. Anyway, no further ado, Cole. Yes, we're going to slideshow one. We're going to start with the timeline. I didn't research the timeline. And now, I started with, okay, what's a normal person think of a timeline? You know, like... Okay, Alien vs. Predator, they're connected, okay, and then we get into Prometheus, and I put the dates alongside them. Okay, uh, makes sense. I'm seeing that, yes. Yeah, it makes sense. Pretty. Well, then it's about ten years later from Prometheus, yes. At all. But, Alien. then I found Stupid. <laughs> and the, the Ridley <laughs> Scott universe, which people have somehow connected Blade Runner. Why is Soldier it? in here? Because apparently that's also connected that's to... Paul W.S. Anderson. This is not Ridley Scott. <laughs> well, apparently it's connected to... It, it it does take place in the Blade Runner universe. Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes. So, okay, makes sense. I, I I understand that. Yeah, and I included some of the games like Colonial Marines and Isolation. I couldn't I couldn't include the AVP game like the original because you don't really have a timeline. It's like in all the levels are like now we're in the Nostromo. Now we're in the Alien Three Prison. It's like a slideshow of the best hits. <laughs> <laughs> Got the Blade Runner game. Apparently that's great. Uh, and then it. my universe, <laughs> yeah. everything. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so, so soldier and predator happen in the same universe. The predators, the predator. <laughs> now we have to take note that the predator takes place in 2018. Now I got the predators and predator <laughs> just from the release date. So the universe. <laughs> So the it, Predator and Blade Runner, so well in one year everything changes. Yep, 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 yep. Well, they get Predator tech, of course. I really, uh, I really hope yours is the canon somehow. <laughs> I really hope that this. <laughs> I didn't include comics and stuff like that in books because they're like, okay, I just gotta limit it to something. To, to, to major motion pictures and video games. Yes. Cause so I, I now need you to come up with like an essay or like. Another slideshow or a paper on how from 2018 to 2019 we get from Predator to Blade Runner. Yeah, we get a really big gear. Somehow all of Las Vegas, all, I mean Los they Angeles don't... gets like turned into this apocalyptic town. Half of the planet leaves the Earth. It's, it's 
It's like a better year than 2020. <laughs> and now, you got the life cycle. But I found this little... So is it pronounced ovomorph or ovomorph? I think it's ovomorph. But it's in the ovum. You know, it, <laughs> I don't know. Like, they, wanted, they just didn't want to say egg. They wanted to say... Something stupid and fancy? Yeah. Okay. And then the, you got the xenomorph and now the praetorians. What's a praetorian? It's like a guard to the alien, to the queen. Have we seen those in a movie? No, but it's in the game. Uh, oh, to preface this, I've only ever seen the movies. <laughs> I've played a lot of the games. Alright. And a queen, I've seen a queen. Like, okay, it kind of makes sense, like, there's a thing to protect the queen. Yeah, but, like, does the xenomorph eventually evolve into it? Or it does can. It... I think there's a limited amount of praetorians. In the hive. But how does the genetics keep... Okay, I'm, I'm... We're going to get into that. We're going to get into how do they, do they molt, if you will, into a Praetorian. Yes, I already have tons of questions and none of them I want answered, so... Yes. Oh you got the God. Praetorian. It's also known as the Royal Guards, if you oh. will. And when a, when a hive gets over 300, Jared, uh, they are spawned or molted from an existing aliens when they eat royal jelly. Wait, hold on. When it gets to over 300, what? Uh, aliens. Like, so when 300... Species. Like, like xenomorphs and... Xenomorphs, yes. Number, population. Okay. Um, they, they, they just, they're just created. Yeah, yeah, you either spawn one or a xenomorph eats some royal jelly and if it turns into one. How does... Don't worry, we're gonna get into royal jelly. That goes into I, a tangent. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about... How does this even... Like, how does this... How does the hive know? Like, we're at 300. Need to make a Praetorian now. Like, how does it know? Like, what tells the hive this? Okay, never mind. <laughs> Nature. Like, I have so many questions. When so does least... a ca- Jared, when does a caterpillar know when to turn into a butterfly? It just knows. It does it. It legitimately feels it because it says, like, I need to make a chrysalis. And then it emerges from a chrysalis. It doesn't know it's becoming a butterfly. Yeah, a hive just knows, Jared. A hive isn't living. It's like living. It's not. It's where they live. <laughs> yeah, but they, you know, the walls let's, are kind of living, just, I think. Let's just, let's just move on. And due to their bulk, they're giant, because they're like a little smaller than a queen. Ten feet tall. Yeah, they can't climb walls or ceilings. You have a typo. That's fine. Okay, we'll continue. They're like extremely resilient and all this. They don't be stealthy. There's fucking full charge yeah were they resilient to bullets fire i hope so i mean fire was the weakness in aliens uh, and it gets a little bit in resurrection and in three yeah for some reason they keep adding th- flamethrowers into the alien universe despite it being like an arbitrary weapon why would you ever need a f- yeah, flamethrowers I mean, are the like, worst weapons in sci-fi to yeah. have on a spaceship like, legitimately, if you fire a flamethrower in a spaceship, the spaceship should be destroyed immediately. Because it's, like, such a high oxygen count. Yes, yeah, so pressurized with such high oxygen that yeah. it should just ignite the whole spaceship. Yet, um, the only... at some point during this movie above me, it happens. Like, the only p- reason they have it in Alien is it's, like, a makeshift weapon. Mm-hmm. They don't add, they don't have anything, so they just make what they can. Yes. So that makes sense. But for some reason, they really latched onto that. Yeah, and, uh, and two, they bring specific flamethrower troopers just Which, to use. they're on a planet. That's fine. Yeah, and they like they probably had thought, like, oh, to destroy vegetation that's overgrown and stuff. That makes sense. Yeah. But, Except like, they, they, they latched onto that as the weakness to the xenomorph from there. Yeah. It's weird. Uh, then we get to royal jelly. Because I thought, I was thinking of you, Jared, and you thought, well, what the fuck's royal jelly? <laughs> so it's made well, by oh, a... Oh. Okay. So in bees... The queen produces really royal jelly. Yes. However, royal jelly is only made for meant for future queens. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why in this universe does royal jelly it can al- make guardians? It can also make queens. It just says believed to be involved in creating queens. Where's it's your evidence? Never, Do you can... have empirical evidence or not, Cole? No. Okay, then. It's from a wiki. <laughs> I mean, the royal jelly is also from SpongeBob, so. I mean... Jellyfish. Yes, jellyfish and SpongeBob, <laughs> Royal Jelly Queens. I remember. I've watched SpongeBob. Now, okay, they're extremely addictive to humans, and if used as a drug, it offers a euphoric sense of bliss and wonder. Yes, Jared. What is it? Are these bug men the ones from Portal Two? <laughs> Excuse me, Jared. Those are mantis men. 
<laughs> Dude, much... the xenomorphs are mantis-like. A little bit. A little bit. Don't worry. We'll get to a mantis. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, what is this... Too much exposure can lead to bug men, Jared. If you uh, drink too I've much. read that clearly. Yes. My, my question is, what, if anything, is this from? I'm a comic. <laughs> Don't worry. Click to the next slide, okay. Jared. I now need a full list of all things referenced in this. So I can get mad at them. Bug men. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> it's the first episode of Quitting Cole. I'm sorry, I can't do this They're anymore. a terrorist cult organization, Jared. Cult of what? Xenomorphs. How? What? what, what the, the, they, they consist of a human-alien hybrid. They're, they're not a hybrid. That's not how hybrids work. You're an amalgamation. Yeah, but they, they keep drinking royal jelly. Yeah, but a hybrid is born that way, created that way. An amalgamation is becomes that way. The difference is semantics, yes, but still. Look, they, the alien universe loves, like, ooh, it loves getting into the DNA. Let's mix it. Which is for no reason. No reason. Just because, like, they just made up that lore in 3. It wasn't established till 3 that yep. you, they spawned from different, like, whoa, what if it's on a dog? Yeah, or a buffalo? Yeah, they took what it's from. Which is really cool, though, when you do add that to it, right? Because it creates this whole dynamic that they never bring up again. <laughs> No, not really. Until, you know, a little bit in Prometheus and Covenant. They use it a lot in the games. Yeah, in the games and in the comics, I'm sure. Yeah, the, the comics are probably... Some, not this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, this one went like, guess what? <laughs> Bugman. <laughs> they use guns. How, uh, they could communicate with the xenomorphs to an extent. What extent? Uh, talking. Chat, chat, chat. <laughs> yeah, they talk to them like this. But, like... The Xenomorphs just didn't annihilate them for some reason? They like them. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, and they ex assisted the Xenomorph in spreading and kidnapping people to turn into bug men. But the Xenomorphs don't want to turn them into bug men. The Xenomorphs want to put face huggers on them. I don't know. They made them drink royal jelly. It was a really weird comic. <laughs> they like, dragged them back. Is it specifically just this comic? I think so. Just this role of comics. This comic book creator was like, you know what? <laughs> Bugman. Bugman. I understand I got this really cool killing machine and all this interesting lore I can expound upon, but you know what? You know what? Bugman. That's what this franchise needs. Look, they wouldn't let me get my own comic book series for <laughs> Bugman. Okay? So I'm going to put them in here. Uh, I do really do like when writers do that. Like, they wouldn't let me make this. So I'm just going to shoot her into this franchise that made me work on. It's canon. It's all canon. Oh, yeah. Then we get to the Queen Mother. Wait, what? So the Queen Mother is like the big queen. She controls all the Xenomorph Queens. This contradicts the current movies. Well, that's fine. Everything contradicts everything. Wait, but so are they a hive mind? Yes. Why are they a hive mind? Well, they, they obviously are a hive. So now they're a hive mind. And obviously, but like, who had the bright idea to turn them into a hive mind? Yeah, and she lives on Xenomorph Prime, Jared. Who named it that? Uh, Besides the writer. <laughs> <laughs> did the writer just like, you know more pride, that's the name. Like, did, is there any story on how like, the... They the, name it? Like, like if, <laughs> if anyone believe, here knows. There was there was a comic in which um, that was like a... Instead of doing Alien 3, those characters from Aliens live and they go... And I think um, Hicks like kidnaps Newt and takes him to... To hunt more bugs. To help her get over it, I think. I never read it. I read the beginning bits, but... <laughs> just just seeing them worth prime. Yeah, and then these ones have new uh, guards called Palantines. Which... Palpatine, got it. Yeah, Palpatine, you know. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Do it. <laughs> just lightning hands <laughs> protecting them. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I mean, uh, me... She'd probably be better protected, I suppose. And you could use her for death. Oh my god, we're oh, so now combining the Star Wars and Alien franchises? Yeah, of course. Oh, we could have so many types of xenomorphs because they attach to all the alien races. <laughs> I just want a Gungan xenomorph now. <laughs> <laughs> my brain instantly goes to the biggest shit post I can think of. If only if we could attach it to fucking Jar Jar. 
and we get to watch the scene. <laughs> you finally root in a chestburster scene. <laughs> finally kill him off, but at the same time, it a- just pops out and goes, Me so hungry! <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I want to kill myself for coming up with it. Uh, but, uh, I'd also like to mention that their telepathicness could, uh, give you nightmares. So it affects humans in some way. I'm going to read this aloud. Possessing telepathic ba- abilities to command the xenomorphs even on distant planets across the galaxy also seem to affect humans as to cause nightmares. She has like a hive and has like several orbs in the comic. And there's like a central orb. And that's where she lives and hangs out. But why would she give humans nightmares? Well, it's, I think... Is it, it's, so, so is that how they fucking get away with the nightmares from Newt and Ripley and Aliens? You know, maybe it's like, like... <laughs> Were they trying to explain con- that in the comic, and they just said, fuck it, this one sends nightmares to people. I think it's like a side effect. They don't mean to do it, but it's just like... If, if humans are in the vicinity of... Yeah, Buddhist, okay. they pick up on it, despite us not being telepathic, but... It depends maybe on our people. brains just operate at a similar frequency because the xenomorphs have had human DNA in them or something. Sure. I don't know. I'm trying to answer questions that this is giving me. Mostly, I just have a headache now. <laughs> this ain't gonna give you answers. Oh god. Oh yeah, I go into the Palantine. They're kind of cool looking, actually. I like them. They do look pretty interesting. Not gonna lie. I kind of like they... the tall slenderness to them. Okay, they remind me of the Deacon. So no, I hate them. <laughs> no, the Deacon wasn't tall and slender. He had like a sharp head. But like the whiteness to him. Oh uh, well, the side ones on the side there are dark. No, they're still white. There's just a shading. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one at the bottom's dark, but that also just reminds me of the fucking mural. Yeah, it does. Artistic representi- representation, and, you know, they take differences. Maybe maybe they base it Deacon off this. Yeah, I like to think all the comics were made by engineers. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's keep going. I was to say. Oh, the way when you tried it. I forgot all of this, by the way. You, so you completely I'm... skipped the last slide. Hmm? You didn't say anything. Oh, yeah. Hold on, previous. No, oh, that's next. No, I mean, like, you didn't really... Uh, whatever, say much about the Palantine? Yeah. And there's not much to say besides it protects the Queen Mother. Yeah, we already kind of went over that. Yeah. yeah, there's not much to it. It's just like a cool xenomorph. They're like, hey! You gotta Shoehorn have... new things into this, because that's all we really want to do with these comics. Yeah. It does look cool. Yeah. It's fine. It doesn't have to be special. Don't we? We'll get the special. Found it in... Oh, God. Founded in 2099. That does. Yeah, that makes sense in the timeline. So does Prome- so Prometheus? It's not Wayland Utani Corp. It's just Wayland Corp. Yes. Okay. Yeah, eventually between Alien, uh, Prometheus, and Covenant, there was a merger. It doesn't so, matter. So Wayland is the British section. Utani is the Japanese section. Yes. Okay. They sell like tech and synths and spaceships and, and aliens. Well, they keep trying. They want to. Here- sell- they were selling us pets. <laughs> <laughs> no, they have the, like they have the military science contract, according to aliens. Like uh, David, you know, they want him to pet him. <laughs> Constantly seeking to capture the xenomorph to use as a bioweapon, yes. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Right. And they, uh, they have, yeah, I was reading into like how they have stock in the USCM, Colonial Marines. Militaries don't have stocks. This is like a corporation. Everything's a corp. Yeah, but the, the U.S. Colonial Marines. United. Space. United. Systems. What? Like, yeah, exactly. Like, it's it's still, like, a political arm of military. How the fuck do you have stocks to... Like, I understand they have they have contracts for them. They've already said they have yes. the, the scientific weapons. They, have, they, they make their ships. They do all that stuff. Then they also own stock in it. Like, that doesn't... <laughs> does not work. I read that in a wiki. I was like, oh, let's throw this in there. I didn't really uh, think about it. That's not how that works. I'm like, whoever wrote that wiki, I will find you. <laughs> for making fire me fire. eventually read this. Hold on. Hold on what? Are you on the next one? Yeah. Ah, uh, the fall, fall and and by Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> All based on a quick line in <laughs> Resurrection. It doesn't even seem like they've tried to connect it to. I've tried my best to connect that little line to, like, all the little comic lord shit. Oh, God. The line is, is you guys, the corporation, what corporation? Wayland Utai, the corporation who used to hire. 
They they they, they fell out. Dec- they, they went under decades ago. Bought up by Walmart. Yeah, and that said by the scientist that brings her back to life in Alien Resurrection. Are we on that point? Did we pass it? It's already passed. The Alien Resurrection is playing on the TV we have in the room. Oh, yeah, he put it on. It's on mute, but... <laughs> yeah, we're way past it. We're at the point where the fucking, um, um, the guy, I the will... smuggler guy is about to die by the Zemo coming up from the grave. I will say it looks nice when you don't have to listen to any of the dialogue or Yeah, we're ruining Ron Perlman with a fucking pig of a character. Anyway, let's go. All right, so, yeah, they became, they had some troubles with some serious political and financial pressures. Political pressure by who? Uh, like the United Governments. So the U.S. <laughs> Whatever that stood for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Their colony of New Indy sued for independence. Why is it called New Indy? There's a pl- I'm pretty sure that's a planet. Uh, they just let the colonists be named as a planet. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, I understand that. Yeah, they lost out to, a- and then after that, they lost out to a rival, Widton, that is a company, to a contract to supply the United Systems military but like who's written why didn't That's, they buy him out why did walmart buy him they're out one of the conglomerate uh what pissed me off most was walmart part of this not the, not the buyout just like walmart bought out this big company that's been the villain throughout movies um but yeah like yeah then by tw- by two three by 20 2349 yeah i'm saying words Megacorps were outlawed altogether. They tried to appeal for, but they had three years of lit- legal litigation forced them to fold. Jared, Wait, who tried to appeal? appeal? I want this to be a movie now. I just want like a court case. So okay, so like this is fifty years after Wayland Utani. Yes. Went under. Now Ritson and Walmart are trying to fight against this law well, banning megacorps. They didn't go under. They just lost the military contract. They're oh. losing money. Oh, okay. So in twenty, but how yeah. does? This makes no sense. Okay. So in 2049, Wayland Utani still exists, and Walmart still exists, and Walmart buys them out, but megacorps aren't allowed. What? They continued in secrecy, though apparently being bought by Walmart in the early 24th century. Yes. So in the 2300s, okay. Yeah. Eventually, Wayland would reemerge as a powerful corp with the fall of the United Systems military. Oh, my God. How? What? Like this? None of this makes a lick of sense right <laughs> because like if you follow this timeline right of, by the 2029 2020 2090s right they were 2022 90s mm-hmm. they were um they were going under because they were losing their contracts right yeah and 20 uh, 2350 we'll say right about there they outlawed megacorps how does a megacorp operate in secrecy okay second off and more importantly walmart is also a megacorp well we don't know what they do now in the future hey in the 1990s, when they said the line, it was a megacorp already. Also, remember, this exists in the Blade Runner universe, so there's a Walmart in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, they, they somehow survived. I hate you, Cole. <laughs> <laughs> the Brad. And it's in the Predator universe. <laughs> I hate everything. But, like, my question is, how is Walmart still just operating normally? <laughs> They're all they're able to buy Wayland Utani. And then where does Wayland come back in all this? His family's all dead. Does David come back or something? I don't know. <laughs> like 2400s? Ah, oh, I'm done. Well, oh, the- we're only halfway through. Oh, yeah, we get to the. You really want to know about the Alien 3 prison. So, I will note how this. He asked me for a list of questions I had after watching the movies. One of the biggest questions was everything about the Alien 3 prison, because it was not explained at all. Like, why is it, like, no one's there but the prisoners? Why is it run on the honor system? <laughs> why do they have, like, two people that are not prisoners there running the whole thing? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, and then they get the, oh, three guys, sorry, because the one dumb dude. Yeah. Uh, 81, I think is what they call him, right? And they're like, wow. they're like, what's this, what's this, no, 85, what's this 85 thing? Some people, some of us gotta look at his personal documents. It's his IQ. It's like, that's just fucking dumb joke. Anyway. Why don't they end up like Australia? Just end up becoming autonomous? Yeah. Like, what's with their weird religion? That's, yeah, that's really weird. Okay, anyway, let's go. They're like a Class C correctional uni. is a prison colony that was op- built on Fiona 161 along with a mineral refinery. It's all owned by Wayland. It's a uh, Fear Arena. Yeah, you I said don't Fiona. Know. This ain't Shrek. <laughs> okay. Um, or um, or Madagascar, the hippo. Her name was Fiona. I think so. Yeah. 
Gloria, yeah. Well, that sounds like a hippo name. It's not. Anyway, continue. It could be. You can name a hippo anything. <laughs> continue. <laughs> the correctional unit maintained a number of double Y chromosome maximal risk prisoners. The genom... Double Y chromosome. Yes, that's what the wiki said. How? The genetic makeup of the inmates, all which are are males that have deformity of the X and Y chromosomes that resulted in an XYY pattern. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. This pattern gave them antisocial behavior, and specifically the raping and murdering of women. Okay, why is this never explained in the fucking movie? <laughs> Like, like, yeah, all the characters in there are rapey, and, like, they're like, keep them away, keep the woman away from them, they don't see women. But, like, at the same time, it's never explained, because they have a weird genetic deformity that gives them an additional chromosome. Like, they have three instead of the normal X and Y, so they have... Does that mean they're not... They're, they're, they fucking have, uh, 69 chromosomes? I mean, then... I, it's, I mean, it's impossible, right? No, it's not. It's not possible. Let's, let's just get that out of the way. This is physically impossible. You, they, if they were Y, Y, they wouldn't even have nipples. I don't know. And there would be so much testosterone, they would just be murdering everything on site. But, like, this right here is my most annoying thing. <laughs> it, it takes science and it just says, nope, uh, this doesn't exist. Like, These guys have extra chromosomes and they're extra manly and they're going to rape you. But then they don't for, like, two-thirds of the movie until she's alone with them. And then even then, it's just four dudes. Like, I mean, yeah, they explain that. that's how they explain that one rape scene. It's like... It's like the writers took a course in, like, genetics real quick, and it's like, oh, that sounds cool. What if we just put another Y? What if there's more Y? Like, what? <laughs> no, that works. You can't. Yeah, that's, that's not how any of this ever worked. It's not how any of it ever will work. Can you please get a geneticist in on you trying to do dumb shit like that? Yeah, they only can... Not the prison. Only had three staff, as you mentioned. Yeah, it had the leader, had his right hand, had the doctor. And they mostly work on a refinery for lead shielding for nuclear containment systems. They didn't mention that. They just said, yeah, we have the lead refinery. It's been closed for decades is what they said. Yeah, by the time Ripley came along, there were only 22 inmates and the foundry was left inactive. Okay, why? Does this, this, this double Y things just stop happening? I don't really explain it in the wiki. Maybe I just didn't listen. Maybe they mentioned that in the movie and I just never heard it. Uh, I've, granted, I've only seen Alien 3 twice. I haven't seen it in like... I, didn't I, I watched every single movie for this besides AVP. We'll get to there. We'll get there. Your oh favorite. God. Your oh, favorite. Is he here yet? Is he here in the movie? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, uh, soon. He's gonna be in the next twenty minutes or so. Anyway, continue. Ah, a mutant human xenomorph hybrid creature. How? How did the human hybrid come from the queen? Why does it recognize Moyle Ridley's his mom instead of the queen? Why does it have such weird fucking eyes? I love its eyes. It's just so sorrow and sad. So disturbing. <laughs> it made me so angry to watch this. <laughs> like, like, why is it born and then just instantly kills the queen? Bam! Well, it doesn't recognize it, Jared. It looks so different. <laughs> what? <laughs> This doesn't look like Ripley at all. It looks exactly like Ripley. It looks nothing like her. Like, if Sigourney Weaver had that body, I would be like, alien shit. Oh, that's actually part of this uh, slideshow, too. What? It's going to look like Ripley. Is it? It was supposed to. Oh, my God. Let's get to it. A see. byproduct of the cloning process, which gave the queen a secondary birthing cycle, giving her womb, her a womb and allowing for a live birth. This egg sac would have been replaced and stop making eggs and make a womb for her. So I've made this point before, and I'm making it again. Live birth defeats the point of the biomechanical nature of the xenomorph. They kind of dropped that by now in the Alien franchise. I don't care. What I'm saying is, part of the xenomorph's appeal is it can now latch on to things, and take something from them, and gain and adapt, becoming adaptable. It, yes. can, gain, it can exist in any environment so long as there's a living species there, right? With a live birth, it loses that feature of its genetic ev evolution. It loses the ability to adapt to things. Just yes. Because it's, it's only taking its own genetic makeup now. Yes. So essentially, you're saying, cool, we've created a half human, half xenomorph, 
and now they can only exist in the same place as humans can. And you're essentially taking the xenomorph, the ultimate killing life form, apparently, and saying it can only do kill on specific planets. They now. introduced the idea of them being able to adapt in three, then drop it in the next one. <laughs> right? They're like, <laughs> we, they can adapt now. Actually, they just want to get live birth so we can crank them out faster. Faster, but they all can't survive in space, right? Can the the the, 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 the can it survive in space? They never address that. There's only one of these things. No, no. How they kill it in 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 uh in resurrection? Is that the end? Well, no. They they suck it out through a tiny hole. But it's still like like my point is like if say it never got sucked into the hole, right? Which yeah. Sure enough, it... there was other loose stuff in the room. Let's mm -hmm. be honest. <laughs> but like, could it have survived in that room? I mean, also the hole that small would have now have created enough. Pressure yeah, no, it would. If you would just plug the hole and she would well, have been fucked. I don't know if they've ever done that with a spaceship, but no, they've done it with planes on Mythbusters think, or whatever. Yeah, they did. But I don't, I don't, the spaceship probably is more fresh. We're way off topic here. Let's get back. That's fine. Yeah, it still has acidic blood, but has a really long tongue to lick Ripley with. <laughs> <laughs> like, why does it have that? Like, I don't understand any of the features of the new book. It legitimately looks like the worst killer of anything. It has saggy tits. <laughs> it has this weird frumpy body that just looks like it doesn't do anything. Can it, can it give life birth? I don't know. Well, it's twice the size of a xenomorph. Now, I went to a little bit of the behind the scenes because they're great. <laughs> One of the designs originally had Ripley's face on it. <laughs> Translucent <laughs> skin. And they're very adamant that the, it would have genitalia from both sex. Sorry, some technical difficulties, some people walking in the door, you know, a bunch of bullshit. Anyway, um, we were at the, the new board having both genitalia. Oh, of course. Oh, Cole's God. favorite part. And then I have I have a, a rant to go on afterwards. Yeah, so for some reason, they saw that in the design process, like, yes. And they put it in the model itself, and they had to remove it entirely in post. Which mm. sounds like a nightmare. And I'm, I'm I still want to see images of it with these genitalia. I, I we'll find that in part two. I'll, I'll put that as the thumbnail. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the YouTube thumbnail for this. Be demonetized immediately. <laughs> oh my god. I'm glad there's something to create a logo. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. Like, uh, so here's my rant, right? Yeah. About about resurrection. Great That's movie. not how cloning would work. Like, I understand that, yes, because she's pregnant, the DNA has mixed. However, the fucking amalgamation, you know, half-breeds they create is more true to what would actually happen as a parent yeah. to her somehow being perfectly cloned to be slightly alien-esque, but just be perfectly pregnant with an alien sack in her belly. <laughs> it's not how that would work at all. Also, what... She wouldn't have all the parasites she had in her after cloning. Like Yeah, it's 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 it, just Like if you were to clone a pregnant woman, would it have the baby? Uh, no, uh, but like the baby's DNA would be in her blood. Yeah, but at the same point that's because of an umbilical cord inside the mother. Yes. But do aliens have umbilical cords? None of this makes sense. I think that's the biggest point I'm saying. Also, when did they get blood of her with the xenomorph in it? That's a really good question. Uh, never. Y yes, uh, Cole's girlfriend's here. She has a question. How the fuck did they get her blood if she was boiled in aluminum? Because they, they did have the cryostasis chamber. They had the whole prison yeah. to take from. Right, I, just don't, I just want to know the exact moment they got the blood from. It was great. When she was in the cryostasis chamber, she already had the alien inside of her. Yes. According to the movie. Yeah. Well, Whether that's true or not, who gives a fuck? Whether never... that was the last minute decision... I already know, like, we already know about Resurrection. Joss Whedon does not want his name on it anymore. He wants his name stricken from it. He is working on it. They, they filmed two scenes and cut the whole budget of the movie. Oh, it's a nightmare. Like, Alien Resurrection and Alien 3 are just nightmares. Of oh, in production, yeah. yeah. And then, like, it was, and then that that's kind of spilled over into the, the what was going to be the two sequels to Alien Resurrection that just never happened. Uh, plot, Project Red Planet, if you want to look into that. Oh. Oh, I mean... Uh, James Cam was gonna make another Alien movie, but was then... it going to be a sequel to Resurrection? I don't, I don't. I hope it was. I hope he was signed on for that shit. Like, I didn't look into it too much, but if it was James Cameron signed on to be to do the sequel to this shit, <laughs> oh my god. Maybe Ron Perlman will be back and it'll be less sexist. Maybe, but like as soon as he heard that AVP was in the development, he was like, "I'm out. No, 
I don't want any part of this. But okay. anyway. The, Moving forward. We got the Xenoborg. Which makes me want to kill myself by looking at it. But <laughs> it's a uh... cybernetically enhanced Xenomorph. This is from the first AVP game on the PC. I should specify. Does it have, like, predator modifications? They look predator-esque. They're human. Why do they look predator-esque? Probably because uh, they just used the predator character model. Yeah, game. it's probably They probably just used an asset on. and it's like, let's just let's land an overlay. It's fine. No one will notice. They were I'll created notice. by Wayland yutani Corporation. Wait, Wayland yutani When did the AVP games take place? What year? I don't know. But I, had to, I had to include this. Look at it. <laughs> like... Like, this was made from a first-person shooter perspective. I'm like, ooh, we can add more guns to the Xenomorph. Why, though? <laughs> Why does the Xenomorph need guns? Who thought this was the correct idea to create? It slowly moves. It rips through things and has a tongue that can punch through your whole fucking skull. Like, it doesn't need <laughs> guns. It has bullet-resistant skin. Like, what's the point of adding guns? It had... They made the super weapon aboard the USS Obed Obedidius Space Station. Odo Penis. Obo Penis. <laughs> Odo, <laughs> not Obo. You're getting the B and the D mixed up there. Eh, I know. Space okay, why is a space station like you being used to make super weapons? Doesn't it just sound dumb and dangerous? It really does. <laughs> like, like, if I had a place to make space weapons, it'd be a planet that wasn't mine. Kind of like in Prometheus. I did like that part of Prometheus. It was smart. They yeah. didn't want to make the deadliest weapon on the planet on their own planet. Because I'm like, what it happens? I don't want to make it in a space station because they could wipe out the whole space station. Yeah. You know? Wow. Uh, they wiped out the whole station there anyway. Yep. Yeah, they got laser cannons strapped oh. to their heads, guided by a laser guiding system strapped to their head. Strapped to their hands, okay. <laughs> I was about to be like, oh, mother freaking alien, the mother freaking lasers. <laughs> <laughs> Attention to the mother freaking I did, I did. Now, the spelling of laser and laser are different on purpose. Well, I mean, are you British or American? That's the difference. Well, the difference is one's dangerous, one's a targeting system. Well, no, uh, laser is British, and that's how they spell it in England. And laser is how we say it. Spell it I like America. the British way better. Yeah, it's, it, me too. It, it doesn't really make sense. We say laser, we don't say laser, so what's the point? I don't know. Yeah. There's, it should be an X. They're laser. very slow due to the heavy metal strapped to them. But also making them very durable. But what's the point of making them so, like, I don't understand why you see, like, hmm, this thing can kill everything on the planet. Also. With its bare hands, let's give it guns. Like, also, by making it slower, it's taking more firepower. Like, people shooting it more. more. Yeah. It's like, the idea behind it is the problem. Not the execution. Execution's probably fine. You know, lasers, gun. But it's why? It's probably fun in the game, but, like. Why would you do Like. Why would you think to do that? Why not just, like, it be, it's, like, a synth or... Also, like, they, this implies Waylon yutani had their hands on a xenomorph. Yeah, they had their hands on, like, a whole hive. And, but their whole plan was not this. Their whole plan was to breed and sell them. No, of course not, Jared. We're going to strap lasers to them. I want motherfucking sharks and motherfucking laser beams attached to the motherfucking heads. Honestly, this is, like, not even the dumbest idea to... Oh, I'm sure it's not, but you know what? This is pissing me off a lot, because it doesn't make sense to do this. Like, you would do this with, like, oh, we have this cute little alien we can get a bunch of, we'll strap weapons on it, right? We have this really deadly alien that we've never been able to get our hands on. We finally did. And instead of doing our original plan, let's strap guns on it and see what happens. Oh, my God. Wait, wait, what's next? We got the Rogue King alien, oh, which fuck is... this. It's a fan, kind of a, like, a favorite, because it looks cool. It was, is it, it both of those things, or just the one in the back? So, it's fighting a queen. Oh, so it's the one in the front. Uh, I believe it's the one in the front. It's the blue one. Okay, why does that queen have two heads? Which one? The one, the queen in the back has two heads. Oh, that's fine. Well, so why'd you put a reflection on this? In the bottom one? Because it looks fancy, Jared. <laughs> and it's beveled. Beveled? Yeah. That's fine, I'm sorry. The reflection looks weird because it's going off the screen. <laughs> anyway, we just not talk about Cole's PowerPoint making skills, which are excellent. <laughs> so yeah, this was this was a xenomorph hybrid made by Professor Ernest Kleist. Who's Ernest Cl Ernst Kleist? Yeah, he's a professor. <laughs> I love how your digging goes skin deep and none deeper. 
<laughs> like you learned the name. Who is he? No, no matter. I learned the name. No matter. I want to learn about this thing. You bring what King Alien? Why is King capitalized? Because it's King. Isn't it King Xenomorph? Yeah, technically, it'd be the. It's like a replacement for the Queen. So the idea was to make a replacement leadership and for us to control the leadership of the Xenomorphs. So mm-hmm. then we would control them. Why would we? Why would we make a male though? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. It looks cool. Like, I mean, are they? Are any of them male? We don't know. They're... But why did it kill Xenomorphs, not humans? Oh yeah, that's a whole thing that. Like, they swapped DNA of human in there. Somewhere in here is human DNA. Nope, can't see it. <laughs> Look, the Aryan franchise loves, like, putting in hybrids. They, they love loves doing dumb shit. They love saying the word hybrid. I'm gonna fix your typo over here. No. I can't, I can't even edit it. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, it was part of the Project Chimera to rep- as a replacement for the Aryan Queen by, by a king controlled by the humans. But instead of controlling nearby xenomorphs, the king tore them apart and left humans alone. That's nice. For no reason. No reason. Just because it has human DNA. Yeah. I and, like, it, I, and then it went on like a rampage and it fought no, the queen. No, it went on a rampage. Rampage, yes. And Ooh. fought a queen. For some goddamn reason. Like, I'm sure the whole idea was just like, why don't we just have it fight a queen? Like a king versus queen. It yeah. kind of sounds cool. Yeah, that was the whole purpose of this idea. Was to get to that end point. And then they didn't know how to get there. So they just bullshitted their way through. <laughs> yeah. And despite it being bigger and stronger, the queen won. What? Yeah. Why, why would the queen won? Because she's smarter and faster. I'm done caring about this franchise. They've made two good movies. <laughs> <laughs> like, like to be honest, it looks really cool. Yeah, design. and then you could have had it won and it'd be interesting. But no, it has a lose. Anyway. Yeah, because it's dumb and... Oh yeah, we get the, some space jockey xenomorphs, which throughout the games and the comics, they've played with the idea. Yeah, and like in in the Prometheus, they were gonna have an ultramorph, Jared, an ultramorph that was gonna spawn from the air, the space jockey. You know, the Deacon mm-hmm. is gonna be an ultramorph instead, but they didn't. They went with the Deacon, which I hate. And the concept was. To Oh yeah, I already said that. And it was again seen in the apocalypse, and it was like a giant one, mm-hmm. and it attacked, and attacked humans on site and xenomorphs for some yeah. reason. It just kills shit. I don't know why. Why would it suddenly kill everything? Whatever, whatever. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Uh, my favorite's in Infestation because it has the trunk of a jockey before they establish that it's just a helmet. <laughs> it's like the weird, like nasally truck. I don't know. The image at the bottom. Yes. It's weird. Why? What? Like, I just don't understand. Like the like, I understand that you want to expand your aliens, right? But just just make them do cool things and like absorb races in them. Don't just say, "Here's this new thing." It doesn't make always, sense. I kind of always wanted them to see them go on a planet with a bunch of species and them having a bunch of xenomorphs. Yeah, and, and then like, they all see... go to war, and it's pretty interesting. They have like yeah. tribal wars. That'd be a cool little or cartoon even just or something. Like, You'd have, like, runners, the dog variant, along with the xenomorph. Or you have, like, pterodactyl variants, and they fucking fly, and they that, reap hell from above. Now that, and with the, they have a technique where they cut their own stomachs open and rain acid down. That'd be kind of cool, actually. Right? Like, but, that'd be awesome. Drop the since payload. we've said this, let's go on to the next. <laughs> All I see is the title, and it just says Crocodile Alien. <laughs> yes, for some reason, the whole comics love the idea of a crocodile alien fighting Batman. <laughs> Why twice? twice? Twice. Once was um. Kid you Car- add all the Batman movies into that timeline now. Oh damn it! <laughs> you missed your opportunity. There. Uh, but they've, yeah, like one was Killer Croc, the other was just a normal crocodile-like creature, and they and uh, I believe the first a thing. Face they- hugger attack. How I d- yeah I don't know how it would attach. That's to a- it. We're done with this. Part. <laughs> <laughs> I am retiring. <laughs> I will never speak again. Oh, uh, God. This well, is... This, like, I don't know I thought, how... It would I, this is so dumb, I can't even ask questions about it, because it's just like... Hey, Batman kicked it into a volcano to kill it. 
how strong is Batman? <laughs> and, like, he could bench 500 pounds. He could bench 1,000 pounds. 1,000? Really? Yes. And then he could jump from rooftop to rooftop. Yes, and he can run a mile in like four minutes. Which is, isn't the that? The world a... record. Yeah. He also holds the world record for bench press by a non professional. <laughs> Just saying. So we'll go to the next. No human being that can bench press that must can run. Just saying. At all. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. I'm already on the next slide. I've already saw the title. I've already gotten Gorilla angry again. Alien. Gorilla Alien. <laughs> Which, like, is a these... toy. Yeah, it's a toy. I love it. Obviously, the idea is just like, oh, we got a gorilla. He's an alien. Let's see what it makes. And no, no, no. The, the idea was this would be cool, and then it wasn't. Yeah, they saw an opportunity to make a toy. Yeah. Oh, God. They like, sorry. Some have, like, why is, why does one of them have a hand for a tail? Because like they can grab like a... things and throw stuff. I don't fucking know. <laughs> like, it can't. It's also um... in the Infestation game, which. Is that even a good game? I'm sure it. I'm sure it's. It's better than Colonial Marines. Okay. Yeah, it's so, just... <sighs> this, what, so what's... Colonial Marines, Alien Infestation... Okay, I'm, I'm already on the next slide and getting angry. I see this image. The bull alien, of course! It's is, this, one of, is this your favorite portion? Yes, I was just going... I like, saw a whole bunch of toys and I was just went, Oh boy. Oh toy. Yeah. Like, okay, look at his big fucking dumb head. Like, it is a walking target. Yeah, it really is. It, but it also has horns, Jared. It has horns. Like, I wouldn't mind if it was, like... I kind of... I like the one in the corner there a little bit. I like his big feet, kind of. The, the one in the top corner? Yeah. I prefer the bottom corner ones, like the ones that are smaller and slender. Because mm. that would make more sense. You know, you wouldn't want the bigness of it. You'd want the... you want the speed and aggression of it, you know? Mm-hmm. You know? Incapable of taking a rocket to the face. Yes, there's a point in the toys, like on the back. <laughs> Just <laughs> so now your cannon alien is decided by a toy company. <laughs> yes, your cannon. Now, if you want to talk about bigness, <laughs> the rhino. <laughs> yeah, it's just from a rhino. There wasn't much besides it's that. It's more from a rhinoceros. Uh, so is it like a xeno rhino or a xenosaurus? Yeah. Xenosaurus. Or like a species of a, like something that looks like a rhinoceros. We have approximately five minutes until oxygen de oxygen depletion alert is what the comic says. Yeah. I was hoping it would say something interesting about this giant fucking orange and brown beast, but the one like, for some reason the one they have hooves instead of hands. It, it has one toe. The next one. <laughs> 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 these are the dumbest looking <laughs> none of these have felt threatening <laughs> in some way like, i'm sure i'm sure seeing a full-size rhino alien a full-size bull alien would feel threatening full-size girly but this thing even it's... at full size like like it's it it looks worse than the bone naga in D D. <laughs> like like what's the level of threat this thing's supposed to present to me like like I'm not dumb. I'm not like fucking the scientist of Prometheus. Like, the snake's <laughs> hissing at me. Must pet it. Like, it's not what... It like. also can't really... I, it'd be hard to hide because it's so big and... Can it... It wouldn't be able to go on ceilings or like, climb the walls or anything, right? Because the ceiling would just break. Well, it has nothing to grab it with. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure... No, snakes have the... the, the uh, whatchamacallit? Like, some snakes have the ability to slip it straight up. Yeah, well, I mean, look at this fucking thing. Yeah, no, it doesn't seem to be greased in anything. I don't know. It just looks terrible. Like... I think like, the bow naga, great, great, great D&D &D enemy, would look not very intimidating if you Jared. tried to make it realistic, you know? It makes a great toy. Does it, though? Like, what, what, okay, this looks like they're all part of these hexagon pieces. Is this a game? Uh, they might be, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, we looked up at Alien Resurrection. Oh, my God, that face. That's the newborn we were talking about. It's terrible. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> um, but, like, no, these look like they're part of some game where you link them together with, like, colonial marines. And that'd be really cool, but it doesn't... I have never it heard does of this. A little, like, the bull back there had one? Yeah, the bull had one. The gorilla had one. They're all in these hexagon pieces. Oh, she's, like... She's, it's like, mommy. loving it. Yeah, uh... Ripley is its mom. It's... It's not. She's not, but she thinks it's... Anyway, it, uh, we're on the thing we kind of alluded to earlier. The mantis, mantis alien. alien. But, yeah, it's presumed to be spawned from a mantis. Presumed. I Why don't know. Presu like, 
How else would it be created? This one doesn't have the hexagonal thing, so. No. This ain't from I the don't... game. No, Is this based but... from a comic book, then? Did the comic come first? So, I believe the comic was released alongside the toy. Like, if you bought the toy, you got, like, a small little it's thing It's some with kind it. of mantis alien. Sounds like fucking Scooby-Doo. <laughs> they pull off the, the xenomorph. Like, instead of pulling off the mask, they pull off, a, like, a face hugger. Like, what's in it? What's behind this mask? Like, also, like, my question is, it's, it, got, it has to be a huge mantis, right? Like, yes. you get the face hugger. It's, that thing is probably just as scary as this. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it, it's from uh, Portal 2. <laughs> mantis, man. Yeah, mantis. it's attached to the mantis. Oh, God, I went down a slide. Oh, the triple-headed alien. Why? This is just, like, in a game. Called the scorpion alien? <laughs> yes. I don't know why it's called that. It doesn't look like a scorpion. The scorpions don't have three heads. Does It doesn't have the giant sting. Oh, I guess the hand tail. No. Nope. <laughs> the second one? No, nope, that has a hand-like tail, too. It doesn't have stingers. I'm... Yeah. No, no. It's Who from named this bullshit? Aliens Combat Board Game. Are those from that, too? I don't know. I, I hope it's so. Surface level, Jared. Surface level. Yeah, I know. You did one level digging here. <laughs> <laughs> Stay it earlier. We are not experts. Go find yourself an expert if you want actual lore. Yeah. We're I... just here to shit on this shit. <laughs> this thing looks stupid. Like, genuinely looks like one headshot from the side kills all three. Oh, yeah. Like, it's... What would happen if you shot one? Like, the left one with the other two? Like, still... I really hope they're, like, snarky and in Xenomorph language talk shit about it dying. <laughs> I don't, oh I don't know. Let's read the comics. Figure this out. Let's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mozart. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mozart, the specific alien. So, I saw this and I thought of you. So, the story <laughs> is a bunch of ninjas, okay? They go and kidnap an egg so that a, so that a composer can make music from the xenomorph screams. Yes. What? <laughs> Dude, the, the, like, like three I, questions. Okay. One, why the fuck ninjas? <laughs> like, like we need a group of people to go get this egg from space. Ninjas, ninjas don't work in space. <laughs> I believe this was on Earth. This was during like an Earth War kind of comic. One, why does this composer just want to like? Why does he just know about xenomorphs? Why does he just want one like? I want to make it so I can make a symphony of hate. And 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 three. Who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> I like Mozart. He's cool. He clearly killed a lot. Yeah, he went on a rampage during the concert. Still, the crowd screams for more, <laughs> and he's like tearing through them is, with a fake smile. No, should, it's a real smile. Should we this. read this? What comic? No, <laughs> you can read it. I will shoot it's, myself It kind of reminds me of King Kong when they have it chained in the concert area and then it breaks free. Is it? Yeah, it's probably the same. It is just a Kong story, you know. You want to create, capture the beast to put it on display so you can make money off it. Yeah, it's but, very shallow for a xenomorph. It's very shallow. This is shallow. Like, I mean, I understand now they're trying to get super deep, but this shit is shallow. So, like... <laughs> So, like, is it shallow? Is it... Like, now they're trying to get so deep that it doesn't make sense and they don't answer questions and it's just I, boring. I, I got really interested. I started reading, like, the first couple pages. And, like, the samurais cut the joints. That's where the acid isn't. Since when? I don't know. Since this comic. And they're ninjas, not samurais. I don't know. The samurai's the predator, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jerry. Oh, Jerry. This is how I wanted to end it. So, it's a xenomorph synthetic. Developed by the Grant Corporation, not Waylon Utani. Jared? Okay, I'm leaving. No, it has a gun and a cigar. Why is it named after Jerry Lewis? <laughs> it is named after Jerry <laughs> Lewis. Who? Why? <laughs> I ha I've, there's no questions I can ask that will justify this. There's no reason for this. Someone just said, good idea. I kind of like it. <laughs> able to talk well wow. it's on the hexagon thing yeah is this from a g if anyone knows if this is from a game or something please let me know <laughs>
I am. I, I want to find it and collect all the pieces and then burn them to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it has like an artificial pheromone secretor so it can blend into a hive. Because it's not an alien. It's a synthetic of yep. an alien. Like, I, I understand, right? Mm-hmm. I understand that. I Why? A synthetic's whole point is it blends in. Yeah. Well, that's when it's with the people. <laughs> when it's on a cigar chomping, you know... Watching uh, Lawrence of Arabia, it's, you know, smoking, you know. Wait, what? <laughs> like, I, what? Like, what is the purpose of having a xenomorph synth? Well, I mean, it looks cool. I, I think it's supposed to, like, blend in with the xenomorphs themselves. It uses a gun and smokes a cigar. <laughs> yeah. Don't all of them? No. <laughs> In fact, the only ones that have used the gun to this point are the fucking dumb Xenoborgs you showed me. In the comic, they uh, like once shit hits the fan, it like grabs a gun and starts blasting. So, so, so it's, a, so it's like as a programmed intelligence. Yes, it, it's okay. smart like other synths. Okay. <laughs> Why? Just like. For the last seven slides, right? One, two, three. Oh, this four, is how I want to end it. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. For the last, oh fuck it, twelve. We'll go to the newborn too. For the last twelve slides, <laughs> there just needed to be someone in the room to say, "Why?" No one clearly said why for any of this. They just thought it was cool. My problem isn't just doing things because they're cool. That is fine. But when you have a big universe such as this, yeah. You have to ask why. Like, if you're trying to create this huge universe, the question of why has to come up at some point. And clearly, when you see the mantis alien, you see the snake alien, you see the bull alien, you see Jerry and you see Mozart, no one said why. They just said, that sounds interesting and cool. And on some level, yes, it is. I would love to own Jerry. But there is no point. There's no reason behind this. Even if in the comic they gave some shallow reason, in the universe, there's no reason behind this. To make money, Jared. I understand that. I completely understand the, 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 the dollar dollar adding. bills, y'all. But still, there's just you need to ask why at some point. And then after you ask why, you need to ask, should we? And if you can come up with answers to both those questions, then you do it. And if you can't, you don't. That's my biggest problem with Prometheus. Prometheus asked a lot of why, but never asked if we should. <laughs> So the problem with the Covenant at the oh, end, you're like, too. You're like Jurassic Park in this. What? Yeah. You weathered so much you could, you never you're asked if, if you should. should. Very good quote from Jurassic Park. Very true to this. There's a, they, you can do whatever you want with this franchise, and there's nothing you can't do. But at some point, you need to think, is it worth doing? What does this add to the someone, franchise? Someone fucking got high. I was like, you know how they have synths? <laughs> you know more synths? What if we took that and it was a human? Also, and we've got the Jerry synth- Lewis. Is there, is there synths of, like, dogs that can talk to and all that? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> like, that's the only way this has any in-universe sense. Because, like, that opens the door to all of that. Yeah, that does it. Like, it opens this shitstorm of... Why? <laughs> Just... Why does this happen? I don't understand it. I never will understand it. I'm going to have to try to understand it. Like, I'm trying. I am trying like, my hardest like this, to be... Like, on the surface level, this is cool. But this opens up the avenue of, like, okay, so if we do this, then a, then a talking dog can exist in the alien universe. Exactly. The, the problem <laughs> isn't this. This is just the, 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 the door opening. This is just the, the intro to so many more problems that they never thought about down the line. And granted, they'll never answer those questions, they'll never get to them, but people like me will be angry about it. <laughs> people like me who have this deep, innate sense of, why are you doing this thing? You're making a movie, you're making a book, you're making a series, you should think about the next Jared, seven levels. Jared, haven't you ever thought that this was all intricately connected? What? Like, what, what what's it's all, <laughs> like, the, like the snake alien and Jerry and Mozart. It's all connected into one big story. You know, it's all. Is it? It's, it's, it's as smooth as the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Jared. Is it? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it shouldn't be. Oh, uh, my God. This is so pointless. Well, anyway, I guess that's that's it, right? We're done? 
Yeah, that's done. You right, can so, leave. So we're done with the Ripley saga and the comics and a couple games. I can do part two. I, I have enough to throw together. I mean, we could also do Prometheus and Alien Covenant. I plus... didn't touch on um, Colonial Marines. We could throw that one with Prometheus and Covenant. Maybe yeah, we can do some spaceship part two designs. next week. Yeah. Or we can never talk about Alien again, and I will be a happier human being for it. <laughs> Uh, on that note, uh, yet again, yeah, we are experts. No, nope. we're idiots. Absolutely. And that's all this is meant to be. Yeah. Well, see you later, ladies and gentlemen. This was Lord Dump. Ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I'm being polite. See you later, nerds and nerdettes. <laughs> <laughs> see you later, shitbags. <laughs> <laughs> we're done here. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, well, what are we doing next week? Where are we? Um, space, uh, Star Wars spaceships. No. No, they're lovely. They're ve- vetoing that. Huh? What? Why? It's vetoing that for right now. Later. Let's later. Do that later. Okay. We'll do some more. Should we do Prometheus? <sighs> Let's do Prometheus. Fine. Come back next week for just Prometheus. <laughs> do we even need slides? <laughs> nah, we'll just we'll just make a Google Doc and write about it. Okay. We don't need the pictures. All right. See you next time.